this video, we are going to talk about an article that describes the relationship between technology and task-based language teaching, written by Marta gonzalez Loret. The presentation today will follow this table of contents. Students nowadays, so-called Generation Z, I-Generation, Nat Generation, or simply digital natives, have grown up surrounded by digital technologies. Because of this fast technologization, language teachers are asked to integrate digital technologies into their curricula, and the technologies that are receiving attention are based on Web 2.0, which is characterized by interactivity and dynamicity. In other words, compared to the past technologies that were unidirectional and relatively static, these new exciting technologies opened up the arena for students to participate in the process of creating information. However, one important caveat is that incorporating technology itself should not be the criteria to decide whether it is good or bad, but rather that employment of technology should be appropriately guided by curricular principles. So, teachers should first and foremost ask, what does research on language development and education suggest on the design, use, and evaluation of technology? Fortunately, the research on task-based language teaching, or shortly TBLT, seems to suggest that it is a very good fit with recent technological innovations for language learning. Let's see how it is. Before we get into the fit between TBLT and technology in language learning, it is important to first clear up what we mean by TBLT. What is a task? First of all, tasks are meaning-oriented, which means they are focused on the content of the message and are communicative in nature, rather than on the language itself. Second, tasks are goal-oriented. In other words, tasks are designed to have learners achieve something with the language. This idea is guided by the belief that learning happens through doing things. Third, tasks aim to promote language acquisition. This can be measured by three different dimensions, which are complexity, accuracy, and fluency of the learner's production. Now that we have some idea about TBLT, it is time to make associations between TBLT and technology. In the early days, it was simply understood as bringing the traditional face-to-face -face classroom activities such as jigsaw, dictogloss, information gap activities into online spaces. However, technology-mediated tasks are more than just making the offline activities online. We, for, we should first try to understand the characteristics of technology-mediated tasks and then go over two considerations when integrating technology with tests. According to Gonzalez, Loret, and Ortega 2014, technology-mediated tasks have the following characteristics. They focus on meaning, are learner-centered, consider students' needs and wants, as well as their technological digital skills, are holistic, authentic, and are based on real-world processes, bring reflection to the learning process, and provide opportunities for higher order learning. Next, there are two necessary considerations for integrating technology and tasks. It is important to understand that technology is non-neutral. This means that whichever technology is employed in a curriculum, it brings along particular knowledge and skills to be learned, and these may have to become part of the curriculum. For example, writing emails has certain ways of formats and ways of delivering messages. Also, there should be clear articulation of the relationship between technology and curriculum design. Namely, the question of how technology will have to do with the curriculum's components such as needs analysis, pedagogical principles, task selection and sequencing, task implementa implementation, student assessment, and course evaluation should be addressed clearly. Having defined the characteristics of technology-mediated tasks, and two considerations for integrating technology with tasks, we can now ask why Web 2.0 is an ideal fit for TBLT. The answer is quite simple. It is because Web 2.0 engages students in learning. Although there are various ways of implementations, the common ground is that all of them allow active, active participation from students. Therefore, we can expect some positive effects such as minimizing fear of failure, 
raising motivation to take risk and to be creative, and enabling authentic exposures. Because of such a good fit between tasks and technology, there are growing research interests on them. However, the research is still in its infancy. Usually, the research orbits around L10 direction and could be categorized into three strands. The first strand is interested in the effects of technology on L10 interaction. It mainly focuses on CMC, and the research question could be stated as, is technology-mediated interaction similar to face-to-face -face interaction? For this question, researchers looked into different tasks, namely closed-ended tasks, open-ended tasks, and telecollaborative tasks. Unfortunately, the results of studies about the amount and quality of interaction vary across studies, where one side found CMC to be productive and conducive to language learning, while the other found less negotiation happening compared to face-to-face -face interaction. The second strand of research is interested in the effect of the task to L2 interaction. The assumption made at the starting line is that task design significantly affects L2 interaction. As for which type of task is most beneficial to learning interaction, unfortunately, the research is inconclusive and contradictory. In some studies, one is seen to be beneficial than the other, but is not maintained across the cities. For task characteristics, the research indicates that task complexity has different effects to learning in CMC from the traditional face-to-face -face situation. For medium, studies about text-based text CMC found that there were more opportunities for processing output, and the reason was because it separates production and transmission into different stages. The third strand of research focuses on the new tasks developed in Web 2.0. For instance, studies looking at virtual spaces found that these offer greater freedoms of communication, affords a variety of speakers, and provides learner agency and confidence. Moreover, studies looking into text-based collaborative spaces found that they allowed authentic tasks that let students connect real-world problems with learning and that they helped developing writing skills across the overall writing process. Exploration of these new tasks is expected to contribute to task theory. As we have completed looking at existing research, let's talk about some challenges. First is the fast speed of technological development. To solve this problem, we can investigate more general characteristics and affordances of a certain medium instead of focusing on one specific tool. Next is that incorporating te technology complicates evaluation and assessment. The solution is to make technology performance as part of evaluation along with language performance. Lastly, technology now has to become the target of instruction. But since a lot of teachers are struggling with new technologies, there should be teacher training and institutional support about technology. We are now looking ahead of our future. What are some research agenda? First, since there are always new technologies, researchers can investigate its affordances and as well as find its relationship with language learning theory and pedagogy. Second, we can examine debated hypotheses such as cognition hypothesis versus trade-off hypothesis regarding task complexity. Third, we can investigate the role of the multimodality in technology-mediated TBLT. Lastly, we can explore the teacher's role in technology-mediated TBLT, such as willingness to incorporate technology and the actual use of technology by teachers. To sum up, in this article, our discussion started with the definition of task as well as characteristics of technology-mediated TBLT. And then we looked at some previous studies of technology-mediated TBLT, which was divided into three strands. Lastly, we reviewed some challenges and some future research agenda. 
Thank you for listening.